At the bottom of the English footballing pyramid currently sits Forest Green Rovers. 24th in League 2 at the time of recording, Forest Green are flirting with relegation down to non-league football. But what if we could take them from the bottom of the pyramid all the way to the top? Today, we're taking over Forest Green Rovers with a dream of making England's worst team Premier League champions. But it's clear to see, lads, this isn't going to be an overnight success. They are bottom of the league for good reason. We're getting right in there and laying the foundations for the future. A new attacking midfielder, Mark Helm, is gonna join us from Burton Albion. And it's almost taken a month, but we've got our first player departure. Dominique Bernard is off to Peterborough. I think that just shows how bad this team that we're working with is. I transfer listed a bunch of players and we're struggling to get interest from any team. I mean, at least we started the EFL League Two season off on the right foot. Continuing to try improving this side though, we're gonna sign the Australian defender, Alexander Popovich. This dude has winning DNA. His dad coached my favorite Australian team, Western Sydney Wanderers, to an Asian Champions League title. And I'm hoping that winning DNA can come over here to the new Lawn Stadium. But that's the transfer window done and dusted. And we genuinely got no offers for any of the players that I transfer listed. That is, I've never had that happen before, which means that significantly limited the players that we could go in for. That's gonna make this first season so much harder. But regardless, this is how things are looking ahead of the season. Of course, we just played a game on deadline day so the lads are quite knackered but we're gonna have an uphill battle this year this was nowhere near as impactful a transfer window as i expected and with a large chunk of our squad off contract at the end of the season we're gonna have to put significant money into renewing contracts it makes sense why this is england's worst team despite our bleak opening window we find ourselves here though on the first of january in a serious hunt for playoff football one point behind salford city but a lot of teams breathing down our necks here a couple losses and we could drop right back into the relegation battle. So we need to do some work here in January and see if we can actually sell somebody. Because otherwise, I don't think that 23K is going too far. And it's another transfer window of not getting offers for the players that we've put on the transfer list. We got offers for our star players, but not for these guys. If we somehow get promoted with this side, it's going to be a minor miracle. We can't get any transfers for our players, but somehow a free transfer for Richard Keogh to Tranmere goes ahead. Dude's 54 overall, 37 years of age. You're trying to tell me clubs want him, but they don't want our mid-60 rated players. Fair enough. One point. We miss out on the playoffs by one point behind Harrogate Town there. 65 points, eighth place in League 2 with Forest Green. It's a lot better for rea than their current reality, but it's still frustrating. One point. Look how many draws we got. Teams going up are going to be Wrexham, Stockport, and Salford. And the teams down where we are in real life, Crawley Town, Newport, MK Dons. Man City win the FA Cup. No surprise to see us going out in a run round one replay. Newcastle United win the Carabao. And again, out in the first round. I would love if we could win the Bristol Street Motors trophy though. Lincoln win that. Unfortunately, we're out in the first round of that again. And it is going to be Gillingham heading up to League One, beating Wimbledon in the playoff final. In a rather frustrating season, it is quite nice to see Jordan Garrick getting double digits there, 20 goal contributions. He's 25 years of age, but I'm hoping the Jamaican can get a little bit of dynamic player potential to push us through the first few seasons. But for me, the big thing is making sure that our summer signings can get some growth. We only had two of them. Mark Helm up three overall and Alexander Popovich also up three overall. A few players leaving the club. Getting a goalkeeper is going to be our number one priority next season. Luke Daniels leaving on a free. Simpkins loan spell ends and Richard Keogh of course going to train you. Overall though, what a bloody frustrating season one. Can we please get some transfer offers in next season? We said we needed a goalkeeper and that is exactly what we did. We ran and figured out first things first this season before for anything else, who our new shot stopper would be. Josh Griffiths looking for his opportunity. He's going to come down two divisions here and join us from West Brom for a cut price deal. And it's nice to see that the game actually woke up. We're actually getting offers in for players now. Nathan Holland, the first man out this season, off to Huddersfield on a permanent transfer. And we're actually managing to get some loan moves approved. Jack Carter off to Accrington Stanley for the next two years. Harvey Bunker's also heading out on loan for two years. And we're going to use some of the money we've got to improve the defense once again. It is another Australian center back. Unintention I'm not doing this intentionally. Of course I am Australian, but this just makes sense. Jake Girdwood reach 
is joining us here from Sydney FC. We've rescued him from the terrible Sydney FC. One million pounds. Him and Popovich, I want to see what we can do with them together in the back line. This is so... I wish this happened last year. We would, I genuinely think we would have got promoted if we got this level of transfers out. But it is going to be Osada Bay heading permanently. And a loan move here for our Belgian striker, Tyrese Omatoye. Reese Brown is moving to Romania permanently. And Armadou Bakayoko, he was off on loan last year. He's back now and we're cashing in. You know what, fellas? I'm going to triple down on the Australian back line. We're going to sign Aiden Simmons here from the Western Sydney World. Wanderers. We now have two center backs and a right back from Australia. This might just turn into an Australian national team rebuild in the process. This was one of the guys that I was trying desperately to sell last year. Alex Gorin, we finally get a move for him as well off to Jagalonia. And with our fourth signing of the window, our squad looks night and day better than it did last year. The American center midfielder Santiago Castaneda is coming across here from the lower leagues of Germany to the lower leagues of England. Funcardi Dabo is also gone. On, we want to give Aiden Simmons all of the game time in that right back position. And Christian Doidge, again, another guy I tried desperately to sell last year. We finally get him out of the club. This team is so much better than what we had last year. We need to push for, push for promotion this year. This is my goal. I've kept some money in the back pocket as well, though, so we're ready to make some changes if needs be in January. That's what we're after, lads. We're coming for promotion. And honestly, I want to get the title. I want to get our first trophy at Forest Green. Currently sitting second place here. But I say we keep our foot on the gas here in January. We have lost Darnell Johnson on a free transfer, but I'm not overly worried about that one. There we go. A new left back into the club. It's our second player that was signed from West Brom this season. So our back line is basically West Brom players and Australians. Zach Ashworth joining us here on a permanent deal. We're going to bring in the Canadian striker, Theo Baird, just as a backup option because we only have one striker in the whole club. Do you guys see that moving in there? Do you guys see what's hiding in my shelf? What the hell? We miss out on winning the league on goal difference. Every season we miss out on something by the skin of our teeth. But regardless, we are promoted to League One. The climb up the pyramid has officially begun, ladies and gentlemen. I'm hoping we never see the bottom of League Two again. But at the moment, Sutton United, they're right stuck down the bottom. Spurs do win the FA Cup. Did we make it past a round, round one this year? We made it to round two at least. Spurs also won the Carabao. What is going on there? How do we go in that tournament? We lost to Barnsley on penalties. We do win the Bristol Street Motors trophy though. There we go, our first trophy as Forest Green manager. And AFC Wimbledon get their revenge from last year's playoff final loss. They're gonna be joining us in the third division. A significantly better season across the board. Matthew Stevens actually showed up this year. I was a little worried with how he performed last year, but 23 goals this year is great to see. Garrick, 15 and three. Jenks getting a lot more game time than expected and bagging himself 10 goals. Feeling so much more optimistic as we get ready for life in the third division. We've got momentum and a young core, and I want to add to this. I want to push up the divisions. We're stand signing a new right midfielder here. Stanley Mills, formerly of Everton, went to play under Cesc Fabregas at Como, and now he's coming back to England, a more well-rounded athlete, and we're signing him here at Forest Green. He had a great season for us last year, but I want to keep building on that for Teddy Jenks, sending him off to Italy for the season. And with Mills coming in, it's time for us to cash in on Kyle McAllister. He hasn't set the world alight, but he's been a solid right midfielder for us. We're going to give him a move up to the championship as he signs with Carter. It might come as a surprise to some of you guys, but Jordan Garrick is also out of the club. We need some young blood at the left midfield position as well. He has been really good for us, but it's time for a new era. And the former Crystal Palace defender, Ryan Innes, is also departing. Five years younger, two overall higher. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to our new French left midfielder, Junior Cadil, who is joining us here from the French second division for 2.7 million pounds. Squad numbers are dwindling though. We need to start building them back up. Alex Newman, keeping the Australian centre-back theme. We're going to sign this young fella, 17 years of age, as a free agent. And you might have seen him 
sitting in our transfer tab here, but Callum Dolan is going to join us as a backup attacking midfield option. I didn't need anybody that was going to set the world alight. Just a solid backup option. We're bringing him in here from Fleetwood for 420k. I would love if we could make a run at back-to-back -back promotions. I'm not going to get too ahead of myself here and think that that is the expectation, but I certainly want to be at the northern end of the table rather than in this relegation dogfight. But as always in these early years, I'm just hoping for player development and for these guys to get dynamic player potential working in their favor. This is fitting. I, I should have known it. I should have seen it coming. I'm saying like, yeah, I don't want to be at the north. I don't want to be at the south. We're right in the middle right now here on the 1st of January, 11th in League One. We are still in with a hunt in playoff contention, seven points away from Wickham, Barnsley, but we're going to have to string some consistent results. I mean, I mean, Birmingham's only two points ahead of them. So maybe we should really make a push here for automatic promotion. We are feeling a lot safer in the relegation battle, but again, not safe there either. So what we're going to do here, fellas, we're going to say goodbye to our third string left back, Marcel Lavinia, selling him to the Turkish League. And we're also going to say goodbye to a man that has done nothing but whinge and complain since the day we signed him, Mark Helm. We're getting rid of him, sending him to West Brom. That was a failed transfer. And we'll use that money to bring in the Scotsman, Ryan Duncan, for £2.7 million from Aberdeen. The dream is alive. The dream to get up to the championship remains intact. We've had a good second half of the season here. Duncan does his business and we are in the playoffs. We come in a weak position sitting fifth here, which means we're going to start off against Lincoln City. Plymouth Argyle, Birmingham City automatically up, but we are in the playoffs. As we scroll down, the relegated sides are most of the guys that come up with us. Wimbledon, Wrexham, Salford, Burton Albion all going down. Man City win the FA Cup. We, this year, how do we go? We lost in the second round again. Carabao Cup goes to Arsenal. Do we make it past the first round for the first time? No, we lose on penalties to Southampton. And we could not defend our title in the BSM trophy. We've gone to absolutely stinking it up. This is the big one, fellas. Playoff time, and we are heading to the League One playoff final 4-2 against Lincoln City. We win big in the second leg, and we're going to be versing Barnsley. Barnsley beat Wickham to get to the final on pens. Are we headed to the championship? We are not. Barnsley have won both their games on penalties. We lose to Barnsley on penalties and we're going to spend season four at least in League One. It's not the worst thing in the world though, fellas. It does give us another season to potentially stat pad and really work on the dynamic player potential. Might need to look at a new striker though next year. Stevens, whilst he's been really solid for us, I think we're going to need somebody young, especially if we're going to get another year in League One. Stanley Mills up plus three. 15 and two is great to see. McCann up plus four this year, which is awesome to see. I was honestly debating selling him because of the fact that he's been wanting to leave the club since day one as well. And what a start to life here for Duncan. He was the difference maker. Only half the year here, but he comes fourth in the golden boot race and gets himself up to a 72. We're in a tough spot coming in here to season four. I'm planning, well, I was planning on upgrading the striker role. Matthew Stevens, 28, 69 overall. But with a budget of around three million pounds, it's going to be hard to bring in the type of striker that's really going to help us grow this this season so I think I might just wait one more season and really hone in on building out our squad depth and getting some young studs into the side because in our quest of building out this starting 11 and selling players off to get more cap space we've definitely gotten a lot weaker in our overall depth so we're going to go ahead here and renew Matthew Stevens contract an extra year perfect and we're going to bring in some young free agent players here first one a Serbian left midfielder Alan Jelovic joining us what I'm assuming is is Lucas Hiradeki's regen. Jimmy Oliver is going to be joining us. And this young English center half, Albert Proctor. And probably the least impressive of the lot. It's probably a brutal thing to say, but Marcus Fischer an Austrian right midfielder joining us. And immediately we're trying to get loan moves in for them. Albert Proctor off to Vallecano for two seasons. Alan Jelovic off to Coventry. And the Finnish goalkeeper, the one that I'm probably the most excited about, Jimmy Oliver is heading to the Blades. Absolutely praying that we are in the promotion picture. I mean, look at this team. Our lowest rated players are 71 and 70 rated. Like we need to be in the promotion picture this year. To be totally honest, we need to win the league this year. As expected, 
top of the league so far. I mean, West nine points clear, but Blackpool are breathing down our next for the league title. Again, keep our foot on the gas and make sure we win the league this time. I don't want to have to go through the playoffs. I want to be hoisting the League One trophy at the end of the season. We are going to sell Jamie Robson here in January. He submitted a transfer request. I don't want anything to bring the morale down of the squad, so he's off to Turkey. And we're just going to hang on to that money, save it for next year towards our budget in the championship. What I'm, well, I'm assuming at this point is going to be the championship because we're going to have to make some big moves if we want to stay up there. We just need to make sure we hang on though and actually get promoted. There we go. As we drew it up, we have pulled ahead here in the second half of the season. Blackpool have got to be feeling quite upset. They have absolutely bottled automatic promotion. We are Centurions here in the third division. We're heading up to the championship. Rotherham heading up with us and heading down to League 2. Stevenage, Stockport, Shrewsbury, Mansfield. Wolves Fair play to Wolves. They go on to Europe after they win the FA Cup. And despite absolutely dominating League One, we still go out in our first FA Cup game to bloody Barrow. Liverpool win the Carabao. Do we make it past the first round there? We did. It's a miracle. But we did lose to Forest in the second round. Rotherham do win the Bristol Street Motors Trophy. I was hoping in what is probably going to be our last attempt, hopefully at it, that we could get another one to the trophy cabinet. But we went out to Rotherham. And it will be Peterborough United joining us in the championship next year. Stanley Mills take a bow up to 75 overall. He gets 29 goal contributions. Stevens, I'm glad we didn't sell him this year. I'm going to look to sell him next year. Potentially, I might keep him as a backup striker. He goes 24 and 1. Duncan goes up to a 77 overall. We are getting some serious growth with the lads. And for the guys that we did send out on loan, Jimmy Oliver up to a 79. Sorry, 73. I wish it was up to a 79. Proctor up to a 71 and Yelovich up to a 68. We are going to be saying goodbye to two players though. Jordan Moore Taylor is retiring and Sean Robertson, I'm just letting him walk on a free. But we're heading up to the championship. Bring it on. In League One, we were the big dogs. This year, we're back to the pack. We are in with some of the world's best teams that are at their lowest points. Dane Scartlett is going to need to be a huge addition up top for us. We've flirted with getting a new striker for the past few years. Now that we're in the championship, this is the time. Dane Scarlett joining us from Mallorca, 6.1 million pounds. And as much as we needed an improvement at the striker role, we also need an improvement in the center midfield role. Charlie McCann heading to Anderlecht. Of course, now he gets tarred with the has that something special brush, but he was complaining the whole time as well. I'm just letting him go. Moving on and looking for an upgrade. But to get that upgrade, we're going to have to say goodbye to an absolute gem throughout this save so far. Matthew Stevens is off to FC Utrecht. 2.5 million pounds for him. And we're going to be saying goodbye to Tyrese Amortier just for the season though, off to Preston. It's the eve of our maiden championship campaign and we make a huge addition to the midfield here. David Ruiz, the Honduran center midfielder, joining us for 7 million pounds from Inter Miami. I'm really, really really excited to have this dude in the team. This core group of players have been absolutely crushing it. Our backline would have to be one of the strongest in the league. The Australians exceeding my expectations, if I'm being honest. Mills coming off a great season in League One. Can he carry that over? How will Ruiz and Scarlett settle into their new club? There are so many questions heading into this season, but the biggest of all, where will we finish here in our first season in the championship? And the answer to that is first. Oh my my God, we are heading to the Premier League next year. We have won and done the, the championship. Oh my God, that is significantly better than I expected. I went on that whole speech and spiel at the start of the season, how we weren't the big dogs anymore. I'm still barking. The big dog is still barking. We're up to the Premier League alongside Norwich. Heading down is going to be Rotherham, Birmingham, Huddersfield. I mean, Dane Scarlett, Dane Scarlett won the bloody golden boot in the championship. That is an insane season for us. Liverpool won the FA Cup. I did see when I was simulating through the calendar that they did beat us in the FA Cup. Man City win the Carabao. We went out in the first round of that to Oxford Bloody United. And it will be Middlesbrough joining us in the Premier League next year. I think we definitely made the right call bringing Scarlett into the club. 77 overall, 22 goals expecting big things from him and the whole squad, to be honest, next year. Duncan up to an 81, Mills up to a 79. This dynamic player potential is doing its job. How has that happened then? Jake Girdwood Reach 
has gone up to an 83. This dude, when I signed him, basically all of our defenders, I signed them thinking they were only going to be here for a couple of years, then we'd have to upgrade. Jake Girdwood Reach is looking like the best defender in Australian history. One player that will not be joining us, though, in the Premier League is going to be Jack Carter. We're going to let his contract expire. Also, I should point out, they've had their two-year loan moves. Jimmy Oliver goes up to a 76. Proctor only goes up to a 72. And Jelovic hits the 70 marker. We're in a really good position right now. However, we still have some massive steps to take if we want to end up winning a Premier League title with Forrest Green. We're in a good spot coming into the Premier League where I don't think we need to blow up the squad. You get some teams that come into the Premier League and sign five to 10 players. We only need minor tweaks. The squad got us here for a reason. Why not trust them? This right here will probably be the biggest transfer we have this summer transfer window. Lewis Hall, the English left back, joining us here from Brighton, 20.6 million pounds. It's a nice upgraded left back role. He becomes one of our higher rated players. And I think that's the only tweak we need for the starting 11. I do think it's going to be really crucial as the season goes along to make some tweaks with the reserves though. Tim Schreiber is going to come in as a backup goalkeeper. Of course, Jimmy Oliver, higher rated than him, but I'm looking to get Oliver another loan move. So Tim Schreiber coming in as a backup if anything happens to Griffin. And also a backup midfielder signing. We've gone out and scouted in the Austrian Bundesliga and signed Mamadou Sangare from RB Salzburg. Five million pounds for the Mali center midfielder. Again, a nice backup option if anything happens to our American midfield. He's a man that's been here since day one. Not gonna lie, he hasn't really contributed much to the side, but he's just been hanging around. It's finally time to say goodbye to Maddox. Pretty good move for him though. Still gets to don the green and black heading to Austin FC. And I'm really excited about the position Jimmy Oliver's going to be in in the next few years. He could be our future starting keeper. Another year on loan for him though. But that's our first window in the Premier League in the books. I'm not going to lie, the Australian defense is kind of carrying here. Gerd would reach up to an 83, Popovich at an 80, and Simmons at an 81. I'm really hoping we're not going to find ourselves in a relegation battle though, fellas. Because of course, winning the Premier League is the goal of this video. It's the main challenge. But for right now, I just want to survive relegation. I'll take this every day of the week, lads. Every day of the week. I currently sit in 12th here, halfway through the Premier League season, 27 points. I mean, we're only two points away from eighth place Wolves. I would not be complaining if we got a Conference League or Europa League spot, but I'm not so worried on that. I'm more worried about not slipping down because we're not safe by any stretch of the imagination. It would have to take a massive slide, but we're not safe from the relegation battle. But I will not be signing anybody this window. We have got no money. The one thing I'm gonna spend a little bit of money on, which we can do, is just the continuation of trying to improve our coaching staff. Yep, yeah, that's fine. I mean, Europa League and Conference League was definitely a little bit of a North Star for this season. But like I said, all I wanted was to survive relegation. Fair play to Fulham. They've made a huge move here in the second half of the season. End up finishing 14th. And Nottingham Forest, that's what I'm saying. Forest will like like right near us in the table, weren't they? I'm pretty sure they were right behind us in January. They've fallen down into the relegation zone. But our goal is to win a Premier League title. Currently, Arsenal are top of the lot. Just three losses this year. Arsenal's also won the FA Cup. They've done the double. Unfortunately, we went out in the round of 32 to Brentford. Liverpool have won the Carabao Cup. You can't see it there, but we copped a 3-1 loss to Palace. Juventus did win the Champions League. Lazio win the Europa League. And Arsenal have done the treble. They win the Conference League. Dane Scarlett has got the job done again in the Premier League though I'm really happy about that. 17 goals for him. Mills, the growth is a little disappointing. I thought he would have been growing a little more than that but 14 and 3 that's good to see. 9 and 9 there for Junior Kadile. How did old mate go? Oliver only up plus 278. I don't know he comes back. I think I'll probably keep Josh Griffiths again. We are going to be saying goodbye to one of our goalkeepers, though. Jamie Sell, the Kiwi. Been a backup his whole career here. We're going to let him go out on free agency. Maybe, maybe the Wellington Phoenix will pick him up. I didn't realize this at first, though. Jake Gerd would reach up to an 86 overall. Sydney FC, what have you guys been feeding this kid? We need to separate ourselves from the pack this year. In this whole video, every time we're into the second season of, of a division, we make a massive leap. I'm hoping to continue that trend. The English wonder kid, Lewis Miley. I have, don't think I've signed him in any rebuild ever. But we're breaking that here. We're bringing him across from Borussia Dortmund. He had 12 months on his deal, so we get him on a cut price deal. I'm excited. That's a huge step forward. But if we want to sign anybody else, we're going to sell up because that's basically 
literally our whole budget gone. I sat here debating this one, and honestly, fellas, I don't know if I made the right call or not, but I've taken the money. Junior Kadile, Arsenal have come in for him. I said when I saw the transfer offer, I went and negotiated, and I said, if I can get 10 million or more over his value, then I'll take it. 36 million pounds, that's gonna go a long way towards getting us a new star left midfielder. And we're about to pack even more punch here on the center midfield market. Our former center midfielder, Santiago Castaneda, off to Wolverhampton. I was so tempted to give him the starting goalkeeper role. This is the most crucial year of his career though. Jimmy Oliver, another loan. He's off to Lazio for the year. We've got to be thinking European football this year, fellas. We get Malik Fofana, the Belgian midfielder. He's going to join us from Lyon. A club record transfer fee of 44.4 million pounds. I'm excited for this dude on the left-hand side. I'm thinking he's going to be a huge upgrade on Junior. And on the very same day, we're going to get ourselves a backup right back prospect here in case anything happens to Simmons. Luca Michel, a young Belgian fella joining us on a free. This team is surely good enough to get some sort of European football. I still think we're a few years away from being Premier League title challenges, but with, with all the Australians to be fair, and Duncan, Miley and Fofana coming in, this is a really, really balanced side. One that I'm really curious to see where we're sitting come January 1st. It's ironic. It's almost become a bit of a meme on the channel where I say the draws are killing us and we need to convert the draws into wins. Whereas this season, the draws aren't a problem at all. We need to convert the losses into draws and then the draws into wins. We sit ninth here on January 1st. Luckily though, a lot of teams are having similar problems. We are just two, three points away from the Champions League. So if we get our act together here and do just that in the second half of the season, who knows where we'll end up. I mean, we are only nine points away from Man United here. So we technically are in with a chance of completing the challenge here today, but I don't know, man. I'm not feeling super optimistic about that half. Just the one signing here in this January window, though, going to bring in a backup goal, a backup striker, rather. Thomas Castanaros, German striker, coming across here from Stuttgart, providing some much-needed backup to Dane Scarlett. It's not a Premier League winning signing, but I'm hoping it's going to go some way. That is not what we were after. I mean, we got more draws in the second half of the year, but we have slid down to 10th place in the Premier League. That is incredibly disappointing. We end up being 10 points away from the top four and Liverpool end up winning the league. That is such a low scoring season in terms of points. This could have been such a great opportunity to win the league this year. Relegation zone, Newcastle will almost go down, but it's Leicester, Bournemouth and Fulham. Luton Town win the FA Cup. How do we, we lost in the semis again. What a great opportunity to win an FA Cup. And Sheffield United win the Carabao. What is actually going on with the Cups this year? We had a great opportunity in everything, but we got in the third round there. PSG win the Champions League. Man United win an all-English Europa League final. And the Conference League, Villa. They almost get relegated, but instead they win the Conference League. Overall though, I'm really disappointed with this year. I didn't expect us to win the league this year, but 10th place, super disappointing. The growth of some of our guys as well, super disappointing. It looks like we've kind of stalled at the moment. So we need to kick that into gear again next season. Gerd would reach though, still growing like an absolute machine. Theo Bear, the Canadian, we got him on a free and he'll be leaving on a free. But as we get into season eight, we need to shape up because this year was incredibly disappointing. It's time, fellas. I want to give Oliver the starting goalkeeper role. It's going to be a slight step back but I want to see if long-term it's going to be the smarter call. Josh Griffiths has been an absolute stud for us, but we're selling him permanently to Werder Bremen. This is the year, lad. This is the year where we go all out and try to change things from going from like a potential European side to a nailed on Champions League side. David Ruiz was only here for a few years. Didn't work out as well as I hoped it would, but the Honduran is off to Sassuolo. We got 41 mil for it, which I'm really happy about. And perhaps the biggest difference of them all. Another player that I... This one hurt the most, honestly. I'm not going to lie. Stanley Mills is gone. We got a bag for him. 47.2 million pounds to send him to Milan. Earlier on, I thought this dude was going to be like in the high 80s by now. His growth has just rapidly stopped and we need to get ourselves to that next level. We need our whole squad to be around the mid 80 mark. That gave us an absolute war chest, which we're putting to effect right now. Cole Palmer is going to be joining us here at Forest Green. He's one of the most informed players on the planet at the moment. He's been applying his trade, ironic 
basically away at AC Milan in this save. But Cole Palmer is going to be a massive signing here. 86 rated, and we got him on an absolute bargain of just 50 million pounds. And in the center midfield position, we're going to sign a man that is ready. He is primed for his big money move to the Premier League. It is the Swedish midfielder, Lucas Bergvall, joining us from Osasuna. 56.7 million pounds. This team has been taken to the next level. A huge blow for us early here in this season though, Dane Scartlett, torn calf muscle out for two months. So we're gonna be relying heavily on Castanaros here for the first half of the season. It's gonna be a really interesting first half of the season. Our new signings and our star players need to step up because I've got money in the back pocket. If Oliver, I don't know, Oliver, maybe we made the right call there. I mean, all things considered, he looks like a great prospect, 21 at 80 overall. That is a green light in my opinion, but our timeline is starting to kick into effect. I'm hoping his potential continues to grow because we need him to be a superstar. And honestly, Scarlett, if he goes down in overall and doesn't have a good start when he gets back to the club, we've got money ready if we want to replace him or upgrade him. Let's just see where we're sitting come January 1st. Hopefully, it's in the top four. Fellas, this is crap. This is absolutely crap. 11th in the Premier League here. 11. All right, I'm, I'm pulling out. I'm pulling no, no, nobody is safe. We need to make some changes. This is not where we want to be. Dane Scarlett's only got four goals so far this season. Yeah, I mean, so does Castanaris has more. Yeah, all right. Sorry, Dane. Ah. I mean, we, yeah, it's probably time to go for a new striker, mate. Like, at least Jimmy Oliver is still growing. Damn, but he hasn't kept a single clean sheet all year. Oh, maybe that's going to change what we're thinking about. All right, fellas, we've pulled the trigger on it. It's frustrating given how strong a start he had to life at Forest Green. But again, just like some of our other players, things stopped dead in their tracks. Dane Scarlett sold to Manchester City. We've got our man and weakened a Premier League opponent in the process. Alejo Veliz is joining us here on a cut price deal from Crystal Palace. 43 million pounds for the 85 rated Argentine. I'm hoping that's the missing piece that's just going to unlock this season and unlock our full potential really because life in the Premier League has been at what feels like a standstill. And we will be saying goodbye to Harvey Bunker at the end of the season. He's off to collect his bag at Al Ali. I mean, it's an improvement, but oh my eighth. Well, that might get us Conference League if we're lucky, if the right results fall our way. But we're more likely, it feels like at this point, to get relegated than win a Premier League. 56 points. Man City were 31 points ahead of us. My God. At least we finished ahead of Manchester United. But my God, man. we I thought we had enough to at least be top four this year. That is a silver lining. That right there is a silver lining. We have won the FA Cup with Forest Green, meaning we're going to have European football confirmed next year. Arsenal win the Carabao Cup. We did not go on a cup run there. Barcelona win the Champions league villa what is going on with aston villa they keep winning european trophies and almost getting relegated i mean they missed out on relegation by three points and next year they're playing champions league meanwhile napoli have won the conference league i mean it is skewed because he played the first half of the year at crystal palace but it is good to see valise getting goals upon goals upon goals i'm not sure how many of them we're at our club though. Cole Palmer in his first year getting 23 goal contributions as well. Not expecting too much growth out of him being at 29 years of age, but it's good to see him performing. Jimmy Oliver though, 82 rated at age 22. Oh, maybe next year we need to go and get an upgrade on him. Maybe we need to do it at center back, Popovich up to an 84, Hall at an 83. My head is scrambled, lads. My head is scrambled. Going to be losing a bunch of our lower rated players though as we get ready for season number nine. Teddy Jenks departing on a free. Marcus Fisher departing on a free. Callum Dolan departing on a free. Har Harvey Bunker getting that bag in Saudi. I'm blowing up the side, lads. I'm blowing up certain section of it. I'm cashing in Lewis Hall again. The growth, not where I wanted it to be. He's, he's a decent player. Don't get me wrong, but we need studs. We need a Premier League winning side. Lewis Hall, we get a mad profit for him. 55 mil to send him to France. And the same deal here with Ryan Duncan. I tossed and turned over this one, but the Scotsman, this was an offer I couldn't refuse. 72 mil for him is ridiculous. We can now go out there and get a world beater of a left back and a world beater of an attacking midfielder. And there it is, our new attacking midfielder 
Corner. It's a good upgrade and an even younger player. It is the Italian attacking midfielder, Simone Pufundi. We bring him across from Freiburg for 85 and a half million pounds. Again, another club record transfer. Go big or go home, fellas. It's our second Italian signing of the summer. It is Destiny Udogi joining us here, coming back to the Premier League. We've lured him away from the Galacticos and brought him into a hopeful championship winning Forest Green side. Time will tell whether we made the right call getting rid of the men we did, but at the moment, you can't deny it. On paper, this team is absolutely unbelievable. I'm still in shock at the fact that the three Australians have lasted. Simmons and Girdwood Reach, I have zero intention of replacing. Popovich, maybe we look to upgrade next year. I don't know, I don't know how much growth there's still left in him, but I am so surprised by these guys. I'm feeling really confident with the team right now. Just the big thing is continuing the growth for Oliver. Some may argue that I've been hamstrung by my desire of the player that he could become, and I would tend to agree with you. I'm hoping that that kind of can come to fruition this this season and he can live up to his potential. We're right in it, lads. It's gonna come down to the death. I mean, we've got so many teams breathing down our necks, but we are in contention for a Premier League title this year. Man City, five points ahead of us. I'm gonna have to make sure we watch our game with Man City whenever it comes up if we've got them again in the second half of the season because they are the team to beat at this point. And we did go undefeated in the Europa League as well. So I would love for us to go on a cup run there. Here we are, fellas, mid-March. We've got Man City. The Australian Jared Gillette is refereeing. We need a win here. At home against Manchester City. The scoreline, it's a two-all draw. I don't know if that's going to be good for us. I mean, at least it keeps us really tight with Man City, but it's a two-all draw. Jelovic off the bench. All right, let's see how the second half of this season ends. A good omen for the year, though, was us beating Man City in the Community Shield. That's at least one trophy this year. I'm taking that out of the year. West Ham end up winning the FA Cup. Man City win the Carabao Cup. Arsenal win the Champions League. How did we go on our Europa League run though. So we top the group. So we're straight into the round of 16 where we get a huge scalping of Inter Milan quarterfinals. We beat Braga 5-2 semifinals and we go down 4-2 with a second leg 3-0 loss to Marseille who end up winning the Europa League. And Leeds United, they've been really impressive in this video. They win the Conference League. But how did it all end in the Premier League? It ends with us winning the Premier League. Man City, they finish third. So that draw must have been one of a million there. They end up getting 10 losses this second half of the season. And we have won the Premier League title here with Forest Green. What a journey it has been, lads. If you enjoyed it, make sure you click here to subscribe and click here to watch another video.